the real important thing for everybody to realize is that all of these ways, all of these strategies from all these leaders, they all can work. But you need to have the right mindset, the right approach, the right skill, the right strength for that particular strategy to work the best for you. First question is from Carly, and Carly's question is: Are you on here, by the way, Carly? Because I'd love for you to um to pop out and and we can jam out if you are here live. And if not, that's totally all good as well. But Carly uh, Harry Harry Gers, I don't know how to say your name. I'm sorry, um, Harry Harry Gers, Harry Gers, Harry Gers. No, I don't know. Anyways, it doesn't sound like you're here live, which is all good. So I'll still uh, dive into your question anyways. So your question is, I'm a part of TFE. And while I love the process and the journey it takes people on and that it frees up my time so I don't have to explain the ins and outs of the business after watching Brandon's training last week, I'm wondering if I'm losing people with the current process I'm leveraging by sending them master classes to watch first and then another hour and a half, 1.5 hours in the platform. Do you recommend experimenting with shortening the process for our leads? Um, interested to know how other leaders are running their businesses and if they send leads to multiple webinars and platforms before getting started. Um, anybody else have this question? Let me know in the chat if this is something that you're confused about. All right, sweet. So that's pretty much a unanimous yes. So guys, this is going to be really, really important for everybody to listen. So in the business world, okay, generally speaking, even outside of what we specifically are focused on and doing, there are countless ways to build a business. There are countless ways to generate leads. There's countless ways to sell people. There's countless tools, softwares, tricks, and all the rest of it. And what you really need to do to be successful is to choose your path. You need to choose your process. You need to choose your way and optimize that way. Does that mean that Brandon's way is better than someone else's way? No, not necessarily. It just works really, really well for what they're doing. Now, what they're doing is actually more in depth than what he shared on the training. There's a lot more to it on the, the lead generation side, the fact that they're not running ads, um, paid ads, I should say. They are lead generating in a more organic, manual uh, outreach type of way, starting conversations with people and so on. And then same, same goes for their target audience. They're also targeting people that are, have higher credit scores that can get started with more expensive packages with financing and so forth. So there are nuances that are important for everybody to understand. Now, usually when you're, you know, saying things like, in your question, Carly, one of the things that you, I like to always like focus on specific things that you wrote and, and how you wrote it and why you wrote it like that. So one of the things that you, you mentioned here, it kind of contradicts yourself a little bit where you said, I'm a part of TFE and while I love the process and the journey it takes people on and that it frees up my time, keywords, frees up my time because I don't have to explain the ins and outs of the business. So that that is a pro, that is a positive thing that you like, right? Now, if, if you choose to switch up how you do things, then there's a chance that you create different pros and the things that are pros now become cons. It's a trade-off. Does this make sense for people? So if your um, personal situation is that you prefer to create lead gen with your time, uh, which is, you know, it varies. It could be uh, an hour a day. It could be an hour a week, dep depending on how seriously you're taking your lead generation. There's trade-offs. When you're building your business with paid traffic, what you're really doing is you're demonstrating your process in real time to the lead that is going through the process. So initially, it's like when you see an ad and you click on it, you're thinking about what's in it for you because you're like, is this business for me? Is this ad going to solve my problems and so forth. And you're going through it and you click the next thing and you register for the webinar and you watch the webinar. But at a certain point in the process, there's a significant shift that happens once your initial skepticism has been relieved and you do see yourself as potentially doing that business. You start to think about it like, 
oh, okay. So if I am running ads to, to, to people, they're going to go through this process. Does this make sense? So you start to see yourself marketing the very process that you are going through at a certain point. Has that all happened for you guys at some point where you're like, first you're going through it, be like, is this for me? Is this for me? Is this for me? And then all of a sudden the, the, there's a shift where you're like, hmm, can this work for me to be the one taking other people through the same process? It's a duplicatable thing. Does this make sense? So if you are more... Um, naturally gravitating towards automation, lifestyle freedom, um, less time on the phone, closing leads and closing sales. If that's your vibe, then you need to go through more of an automated process such as TFE and stick to that and master that and improve that process. Make sense? If you're someone who's like, I want more um, direct contact. Like I want to talk to my leads on the phone. I love sales. I love being on the phone. I love getting people started. I have no fear or reservation around DMing people and joining these Facebook groups like Brandon demonstrated in his training. And that's something you really truly desire to learn how to do and want to do more of Then maybe it is worth you testing this other way of doing it, but mastering it regardless and not being scattered in like, some people, when they see uh, a training from a leader, they change their strategy every single call, every single training, every single little thing, because they're unsure of themselves. They don't trust themselves to complete the way that they were learning last week. There's a level of lack of certainty, lack of confidence, lack of belief that you can actually follow through and finish a strategy to get it to work for you. How did you. that happen? <clears throat> Does this make sense what I'm saying? So there's a level of self-sabotage that you are actually doing to yourself because you would rather switch strategies so you can say, well, I didn't really go all in. I didn't really give it my best shot. I didn't really dedicate myself to mastering this way. And I'm going to keep switching other ways. So I have this very easy cop-out excuse that I don't understand what to do. I'm overwhelmed. Uh, there's all this confusing information and all these different ways to do business. So those are all cop-out self-sabotage excuses from you avoiding the work in one particular way of doing things because you're most likely terrified of success. You're most likely terrified of, of making money and losing money. You're most likely terrified of people judging you for succeeding in an MLM, direct sales online business, and you don't want people to see you like that. And so there's all this underlying stuff where I'm gonna keep switching strategies so I can delay the real stuff from actually taking place in this business. So the point here is, all of the ways can work, but most likely none of them will work simultaneously at the same time. Make sense? So you got to choose your bread and butter. You got to choose your go-to. And like the thing that is really powerful about, you know, TFE versus like what Brandon's doing is that those two communities are focusing on the bread and butter being different things and just sticking to that. And you guys got to learn to be able to see another leader or another person who's winning or succeeding and look at it subjectively of like just being happy for them and like, great, awesome. You guys have that strategy and you showed us how to do it and stuff, but I'm good where I'm at. I'm happy with what I'm doing and I just have to get better at doing this so it works for me because I've already put in three months of effort in this way, six months of effort in this way. And if I give that up and I stop perfecting this way, then I'm actually going to go back to the drawing board and be confused all over again and not know what I'm doing all over again. And it's almost like you're, you're doing double the amount of work you needed to instead of just sticking to the way that is working well. Does this make sense? So the next part here that I want to address, Carly, because I'm sure a lot of people have this same uh, perspective and mindset, is I'm wondering, I'm wondering, keyword, I'm wondering if I'm losing people with the current process. So what does that mean? What it means is, who knows? You're wondering, what's the facts? What are the facts based on the numbers? Are you losing people or not? It will show you in your numbers. 
It will show you with your leads. It will show whether or not people are completing the discovery process. It will show you whether or not people are ghosting you. You actually have evidence rather than wondering. So we need to remove the wondering for everybody on this call. How many things in your life and in your business are you currently wondering about rather than just getting the facts? What are the facts? How many people went through your process? How many people finished the process? That will give you the real number, whether or not you're losing people going through it or not. Fair enough? So we need facts. We, we don't want to wonder. So you know, all of you know, that if you've sent 10 people through, how many of them finished the discovery process? That 1.5 hours in this particular case, in this question. Everybody here is with different communities and their discovery processes or their sales processes are slightly different in terms of time. But on average, it's between one and three hours long to educate people on everything they need to be educated about so they can make an educated decision. Now, if you go on Netflix, <clears throat> how many of you guys watch something on Netflix at some point? You guys have all used it at some point. Don't lie. Don't lie. I know you guys have. I know you have. All right. So you know those mini series, those mini docu-series, like part three parts, four parts, five parts? If you add up the total series, are they longer than one and a half hours when you watch all the episodes on these like crime, whatever they're called, like mis murder mystery thingy, thingy, thingies? Okay. So 1.5 hours ain't shit. Let's be real here. Yes, it's not a six second TikTok video, but it, it, it 1.5 hours is more than reasonable. And, uh, and, and to be honest, to change your life, to not be able to watch an hour and a half of educational life transformational knowledge and training to get you in a place where you feel good about your investment, um, they're, they would just not be qualified to work with me anyways. So rather than looking at it like losing people, I'm not even going to work with you if, if I lost you from watching a couple of videos that take a couple hours. Ridiculous. You're not qualified to partner with me. You're not qualified to work with me. And I don't want you in this community. I want you to stay exactly where you are and makes zero difference to me. This is the perspective. So we need to actually use this whole process of losing people or discovery process as a disqualifier, whether or not they have what it takes to even remotely be considered. Does that make sense? We want to be focusing on disqualifying people just as much as we want to be focusing on making sales. So how do we get around this? The simplest way to kill an objection is to kill it before it comes up. So if you believe that your process is on the longer side, let's say you think an hour and a half is a long time for someone to go through, and that's what you believe for whatever reason, when you're comparing it to Brandon or you're comparing it to other people, whatever you're doing, you need to get over that. And you need to actually look at it as a great investment into someone's future that can unlock the solution to most of their problems. Like, is it worth an hour and a half for them to discover a health and wellness company and products and the compensation plan and legacy income and setting their family free and traveling the world and spending all day with their kids? Do you know what I mean? Like, give me a break. That's nothing. It's, it's such a small amount of time for potentially every single thing for the rest of your life to change once you get the business off the ground and producing and going in that direction, which even then is, you know, two or three years of of learning the skills and transforming yourself to really get things moving for most people. It's roughly two to three years of like taking this seriously, like they are taking a course in college and university. And then the remaining years of your life is completely different. So I think that an hour and a half is more than fair and reasonable. And the TFE process and platform has generated, I don't know, hundreds of millions in sales. And so definitely works and is effective. And not only that, but you're leading them into uh, one of the only platforms that currently has digital business specialists taking calls on your behalf too, which is a massive area of struggle for a lot of people. And so there's that massive difference in benefit compared to other things that are out there where you have to learn how to close your own sales. You have a calendar full of sales calls 
and you are literally got that hustle mentality to get on the phone, help people get started, which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, but it is, it is called the freedom era. It's not called the hustle era. So you get what you signed up for in that community. Does this make sense for people? So it's like, <clears throat> there's a difference. There's a difference in mentality. There's a difference in culture. There's a difference in daily method of operation. And both are great. Both work well. You just got to pick what is best for you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, let's talk about this whole idea around experimenting or testing, which is another powerful point. When you are building a business with a lead generation strategy and a, a, a sales process, so we're talking from your brand and your content and public facing stuff that you're putting online that is initially attracting people that are like-minded to you and, and see uh, benefits to working with you and learning from you and so forth, which is where that personal transformation is really a massive piece that we're going to help you with, with our new accountability and stuff we're launching soon is really just showing that you are dedicated to growth, improvement, bettering yourself, uh, learning, doing it, and then teaching from that and so on. It, it's, it's a very attractable character for people who are followers or lost or not sure what the best solution is to actually look up to you, to want to learn from you, to model that behavior and uh, come along for the ride. But after that, your process needs to be streamlined, which means that you're picking one lead generation source, call it Facebook ads or Instagram ads, and you're primarily focusing on improving this way. And then once you get better at this way, then you might want to add another one, like maybe YouTube or something like this later, not at the same time where it's different processes and it's confusing. And the golden rule that I've always applied is when you have a new idea or you learn from a leader that has a training that is very different to how you do something is only dedicating 20% of your time to testing this new concept. So when you look at your ad spend, when you look at your time that you devote to your business in terms of actual dedicated, uninterrupted, present time that you're putting in your business, only you know how much time you're putting in per week. Is it 10 hours? Is it 20 hours? Is it 30 hours? Whatever that amount of time is that's dedicated, it's on the calendar, it's scheduled, and you're taking your business seriously, calculate it. 20% of that time can go towards testing out a new lead generation strategy, such as the one Brandon shared. And it might end up working better for you. But the mistake a lot of people make is they're running around like a chicken with their head cut off, stopping what is working for them in the past completely, going over here, making a whole bunch of beginner type mistakes because they're figuring it out as we as we know, we're always figuring things out. Um, <clears throat> and losing focus on what was working for them prior to. That's a mistake. So I would recommend if you are keen to try something new, 20% of your time, it's going to take you a little bit longer to set it up and be effective with it, but it won't derail your business strategy that you were doing before. Does that make sense for everybody? So do not ever test anything, ad spend, time, energy, focus, more than 20% from the strategy that you were learning and implementing and working on that was, that you know is working. Um, and the, the, the real important thing for everybody to realize is that all of these ways, all of these strategies from all these leaders, they all can work, but you need to have the right mindset, the right approach, the right skill, the right strength for that particular strategy to work the best for you. And that's the match that we're looking to find because everybody's a little bit different and some people love sales and other people want to run to the hills and avoid sales at all costs. And there's different solutions for different people based on what they enjoy the most about their business. Make sense? So yeah, like for me, obviously with the size of my organization and the level that I'm at, I have seen so many different strategies in different communities that that was working. Like there, there was a team from New Zealand that was literally making organic sales from dancing on Instagram and TikTok. And they were selling trifectas and quads, just doing like choreographed dances and stuff. 
And like, if we try to do a training and tell all of you guys to start dancing around, popping your booty and stuff on Instagram stories and, and TikToks, like, would you guys all stop what you're doing and go do that right away? You'd probably be like, nah, I'm good. But like, good for you that it's working. See what I mean? So there's other people that are doing door knocking, leaving brochures and pamphlets and doing water demo testing and stuff and trade shows and knocking on businesses doors, trying to sell machines to restaurants. And they're selling some machines too. It's like, do you want to all of a sudden do that now? Um, so the point is, is just because there's a thousand ways to be successful doesn't mean you personally have to do all thousand ways. It's much better for you to get clear on this analyzing of the process and then tweaking and adjusting, tweaking and adjusting, tweaking and adjusting. So back to your point, Carly, and I'll finish up this long-winded answer to your question, is if you feel that you're losing people because of the process that you're taking them through, then the best way for you to avoid losing people is to make content and make ads that pre-frames what they're going to be going through so there's no surprises. A lot of the reasons why we lose people along any sales process, any, any way that we do it, is because what they think they're going to receive, what they think the process will be, isn't what the process actually is. And so we have this like expectation, oh, okay, cool, like after this video, I'm gonna make a bunch of money. And then a video ends and there's another hour long video and they're like, oh, annoying, cancel, refund, this sucks. It's not a get rich quick thing or whatever. Makes sense? Is like the expectation wasn't a match. So if we can pre-frame each step in the process so they know what's coming next, all of a sudden they aren't going to be so intimidated and they're just like ready and prepared for it. And you know, great example of this is Dale and Hannah. They were just on the client success interview right before this call. Some of you might've caught it in the Facebook group that I have. Um, they came onto a call last year around, I don't know, beginning of the year or something like that in April. And <clears throat> this is exactly what was happening for them. They were focusing on lead generation on the front end of their business. They were getting some commissions from the front end sales that they were making. And all of a sudden they had these massive drops uh, after that person started going through a discovery process and so on and so on. And they just thought it was like something was wrong with the leads. Like the leads suck. The quality suck. They needed to keep making different ads and keep getting the front end process even better. And then all they did after they joined the mentorship and we had a conversation was they started to pre-frame the experience to their leads up front. So these people were like already made the time. Like for example, an hour and a half discovery process wasn't a surprise. They already knew that they had to make two hours available in their calendar, get a babysitter, uninterrupted time, whatever, whatever, to go through the process. You understand? And so then the, the quality of people didn't necessarily change, but the quality of the pre-frame went way up. So people were actually receiving what they were expecting to receive. And that congruency makes your closing percentage go way through the roof. Everybody with me? So sometimes what happens when we're in a community for a long time is that a lot of things that to us is a given, we forget to address that for somebody who has no idea what this process is about. They have no idea about online systems. They have no idea about a sequence of videos. And, and you know, they might even be mad about it. They're like, why are all these videos are so annoying? Why does this process take so long? I just want to get started and make money. A lot of people have this mentality. They don't understand why you have to watch all these videos because the more thorough that process is, the less questions actually come into your DMs, which allows you to scale your business more efficiently and, and more effectively, right? Does this make sense? So when we are looking at scaling, the more, uh, the more questions that someone has at the end of your process, just shows that there are holes in your process. So I'll give, I'll give you a great example from a mentor that I had a while back. So let's say that you do a web class, okay? You do a web class, it's 30 minutes long and you give them a bit of a rundown of how we do things, why we do things a certain way. And at the end of this web class, you're gonna give an opportunity for Q&A. How many of you guys have done this before if you've ever hosted your own web class, okay? That's it, only a couple hands. You guys haven't done it one before? Okay. 
So you do a web class, right? And then you open it up and say, okay, at the end of this web class, we are going to have a Q&A. Mm -hmm. So you get to the end of the web class and there's all these questions. What about this? What about that? How does that work? How does that work? And you sit there and you're answering and you're answering. You know what that actually means? Your web class sucks. Because what should happen is that all of those questions were already answered in the web class and they get to the end and it's like, does anyone have any questions? And everyone's like, nope. Then you nailed the web class. So until you're doing the web class with the Q and A, every question that has, that gets brought up at the end, it's all good. You need to take those questions, write them down, add it back into your web class, do another version of the slides, be more thorough, answer those questions diligently until you okay. do one. And someone literally says, or everyone literally says, I should say that there is no questions. Then you fucking nailed it. And then you keep practicing over and over and over again. So there's no more questions. And then you're going to be able to scale your ads. And then you're going to be able to scale your sales. Cause you know, when people complete it, all the questions are answered. It's very clear. And it's either a yes or a no. And either way is perfectly okay. But there's none of this like, I'm not sure because maybe my question wasn't answered and I don't know if this is the right thing for me. Nope, that just means your web class was not effective. Everybody get it? So that's, you got to keep doing iterations until it gets to a point where there's no questions. Then you crushed it. All right. Anyways, hopefully that was helpful and valuable. We covered lots of different things there, but um, we just kind of dissected this long question that you guys all agreed and had. Uh -huh.